Hello friends, this is time for another episode of On the Porch with Pastor. Glad you could join us again. Uh, it's almost sunset. Hopefully we'll get this one in before too much later. Um, just a reminder, heads up all of you are joining and tuning in with us and you wonder what I'm getting these stories from. They're not autobiographical, at least not directly. <laughs> I have some things in common with some of these stories. But um, a lot of these are coming from Philip Gully. His books, he's got a book series, Front Porch Tales, uh, Philip Gully, and he's got another one uh, that is kind of a uh, follow-up to this one, if you will. But without further ado, let's jump in. This one's called Liberty. When our friends' children were waist-high and starting Pee Wee League, my wife and I would take the lawn chairs over and watch a little baseball on summer evenings when the shadows were long. Pee Wee League is serious stuff in our neck of the woods. Matching shirts, big wads of bubble gum, and telling the umpire he's blind. And that's just the parents. Joan and I were watching on Friday night when Robin, a five-year-old girl, stepped up to bat. Three feet tall, 50 pounds, and sun blonde hair. Her father was the home plate umpire that night, it being his turn. He watched as his little girl knocked the dirt from the bottom of her shoes just like the big leaguers. His little girl. Five years ago, he would carried her home from the hospital in a fuzzy blanket, crazy with love. Now she was pounding home plate and aiming for the outfield. Where had time gone? Now he was the umpire. Mr. Objective. Mr. I have no children, so don't expect a favor. I was watching him. Robin had never actually hit the ball. She was always a second or two late. But today was a new day, and who knows what might happen. Her father weakened a bit and whispered encouragement. I saw his lips move. Come on, honey. You can do it. Keep your eye on the ball. Remember what I taught you. The pitcher pitched and Robin swung, wood met leather, a trickle of a hit down the third base line, and Dad went crazy. Forgot all about impartiality. He jumped up and yelled, run, honey, run, and Robin ran. She ran like she had never run before, like she had rockets strapped to her shoes. She ran straight over the pitcher's mound to second base, skipped first base, forgot all about it. Sheer bedlam, Robin on second base, jumping up and down, high-fiving one and all, basking in joy. Parents on the sidelines were jumping up and down too, but for reasons other than joy. The adults gathered at home plate for a high-level conference, thumbing through their dog-eared rule books. Can't skip first base. Gotta be a rule against that somewhere. After a while, Dad walked over to his little slugger, and called her out, while the adults contented themselves that justice had prevailed. In these days of moral cloudiness, we're tempted to think rules will be our salvation. But a stubborn devotion to rules can kill joy in a snap. Like the time when Jesus healed the man on the Sabbath, and the Pharisees cried foul. St. August, Augustine once said, Love God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind and love your neighbor as yourself then do anything you want <laughs> this is liberty exercised within love's boundary love god and neighbor and then do anything you want that gives love and joy all kinds of room to weave their spell irony is love and rules have the same goal helping folks get along though love does it through the pull of the heart while rules attempt it with the twist of the arm. Don't get me wrong, I'm not an anarchist. Rules have their place on life's roster. I just think love and joy ought to lead the way. <laughs> As I was reading this story, I can't help but remember whenever I was a child myself, and uh, my dad was my pitcher in coach pitch, and then when we got beyond coach pitch, he took his turn as umpire, and I'll never forget the time that he called me 
out on a third strike that was clearly way outside. Um, <laughs> it was then I realized you don't leave something. It, it was it was a, as a powerful, powerful life lesson. That's why I've remind, remembered it all these years. It's then I remember you don't leave that third strike up to a blind geezer of an umpire. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, sort of. Um, <laughs> no, the valuable lesson is take your swing uh, seriously. Um, to this day, when I watch somebody watch a third strike, even on a major league level, I think you got to swing that bat. And, you know, aficionados would say, hey, but you still shouldn't swing at a bad pitch. I get that. But this thing I know, you can swing at a bad pitch and hit them sometimes. I've even seen some hit for home runs that were technically bad pitches. Got some friends here. I don't know if you can hear them or not. The geese are coming overhead. Uh, even though they're geese, I might better duck. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm feeling a little silly with that. Um, but what I was saying is this. I've seen some bad pitches hit for home runs. And I've seen some hitters watch what they thought were bad pitches only to be called for the third strike. Friends, I'm going to say this to you. I don't know if you'll hit the bad pitch, where it'll go, if it'll be a base hit, if it'll be a double, a triple, or a home run. I don't know. But I can promise you this, as any coach coaches his, his hitters, little hitters, you will miss 100% of the swings you never take. Maybe you're at a place in your life right now where you're not sure which direction to go, what choice to make. I counsel you to pray about it, truly give it to God, and wait on the Lord's direction, maybe open doors and opportunity. But when that opportunity comes, take your swing. You might strike out. You might get a home run. But know this, if you don't swing the bat, you're out already. You never even bothered to get in the game. Um, so, anyway, that's all for today. Thank you for watching another episode of On the Porch with Pastor. We love you. And remember, Jesus is coming soon. So, eyes to the skies.